Hey folks, if you have an interest in The Anxious Person's Guide to Non-Monogamy being an audiobook, then there might be some news on the horizon, though I can't permanently say at the moment. If you want to be notified if and when an audiobook comes out, then please go to nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash audio notify, and you can sign up to just get an email whenever there's some significant news about that. So yeah, if you've been wanting an audiobook, now might be a good time to sign up. Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 122 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to ask at nonmonogamyhelp.com and you can also go to the website and figure out how you can record your question as well if you'd like. It is a little bit time limited, so it's not the best for the long questions, but recording a question is always fun, so you can do that at nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash contact. If you want to read the columns and listen to all the podcasts, everything is at nonmonogamyhelp.com and if you want to be awesome and support Signing up to the email newsletter is actually a really great way to do that because social media is always, you know, affecting my reach and limiting my reach because they want me to buy ads because they're really just ad selling platforms. That's all they are. So if you want to sign up to my email list, that would be the best. You can do that at nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. And if you want to, you can follow on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. But really... You know, you never know what can happen on these platforms. Maybe one day they delete it because they say I've violated something or other or, you know, Elon Musk gets tired and deletes the whole plot. You never know. So email list is the best way to go. And if you want to generally support, you can become a patron. Even the lowest tier helps me run the comms and podcast. And it's just nice. It's just like another person saying, hey, I like this. And you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. And if you do the podcast shout out tier, I will shout you out at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first episode you're ever hearing, I put forth a discussion question every week so that you can use it to chat with people and have interesting discussions. This week's discussion question is, how do you deal with long distance relationships? This is an interesting one. Some people can do it. Some people can't do it. I think that I don't mind doing it necessarily. It just depends on the context. I think I've actually been in situations where, gosh, this sounds really sad to say, but it's the truth. Like I have had so many bad kind of familial relationships and dealt with neglect and dealt with so much crap that even a long distance relationship can sometimes feel really satisfying if the person is super attentive and really wants to spend time with me and quality time is like my love language. Although, you know, I know there are downsides to like the whole love language thing, but like quality time is so important and that quality time can be spent long distance. In fact, someone can spend more quality time with me whilst they're away than someone who's literally in the same house as me. So I think as long as my needs are met, I can totally do it. It's just, obviously it's not ideal for lots of situations, but yeah, that's how I feel. Let me repeat the question. How do you deal with long distance? Let's get to this week's question. My partner and I started an open relationship two years ago when we started to date. Mutual agreement because we have a long distance relationship. We are getting married next year. At the beginning, I was the one who dated people and he wasn't doing because he was always busy because of his job. Now he has a new job and more free time so he wanted to try to date other people. He did and it was so triggering for me because I'm anxious. I went back to therapy and found help on books and podcasts. I'm dealing pretty well with everything now and my fiance. He's an awesome person. He's honest, patient, empathetic, and we have strong communication. The advice I need is about what I can do when I'm feeling jealousy. I'm not afraid of losing him. I feel kind of envy because someone else is receiving what I can't receive because of the distance, physical touch, sex, etc. And when we reconnect on video call after his dates, I see his body and on my mind there's the thought of someone else has touched him and it's uncomfortable. My overthinking mind runs with the thoughts of him being with someone else. Thinking of him with someone else makes me feel maybe sad and uncomfortable. At the moment, I'm not dating anyone because I'm still working on my trauma and therapy, but I'm also trying to understand my feelings about my open relationship and dealing with it because I want to have agency and to be empathetic with my partner, my metamor, and myself. So much stuff to work on. That's why I don't want to involve someone else until I feel confident about it. (music) 
Before we get to this week's answer, I want to quickly remind you of this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist. For a lot of people looking locally for a therapist who may be supportive of polyamory can be impossible or out of their budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of the day, and they do also offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code NOMINOGAMYHELP at checkout or going to betterhelp.com forward slash NOMINOGAMYHELP. Let's get to this week's answer. Firstly, I think you need to give yourself some permission to feel like shit. And I think you need to be realistic that you're going to feel like shit because there is essentially an unsolvable problem before you. You know, it's kind of like if you, for example, if you lost a parent, if you were dealing with a situation of grief, you're going to feel like shit. And it's not avoidable. It's not something that you can fix or solve. There is an aspect of this that is perfectly understandable, which is someone else is experiencing something that you want, which you can't have. And this is why I kind of talk a lot about jealousy being like not this evil, horrible thing that's always about like someone having a bad self-esteem or not believing in themselves. Sometimes you're going to just have jealousy because It's a situation that can't be resolved. And this is one of those situations. I think just accept the fact that you're going to feel like a little bit shit. Yeah, And I think that that kind of thought of like, oh, someone else has touched him. I think there's a part of that that's kind of cultural because we do kind of have that encouragement within our society. I mean, you may have been in a different society. It's hard for me to know. And maybe this doesn't apply to you. But I do think that we have that kind of encouragement to feel that sort of jealousy of like, oh, there's this contaminant almost when someone else has touched something or something, you know, I think we have a little bit of that hangs on, but part of your feelings of like, I want to receive all this thing that someone else is getting. I mean, that's totally understandable. I, 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 I think that you need to allow yourself to have those feelings and try to find coping strategies for dealing with them. I think another aspect of this that can also help with the coping strategies is I'm not sure if you have a plan to actually get back together. I think that, you know, you're getting married next year and he's busy because he has a job, but he now has more free time. But I feel like you're long distance now. What is the plan for the future? What are you planning on living together at some point? Is this long distance permanent or is this um, going to be resolved at some point? Because I think that is a big part of dealing with the crappy side of any situation. You can sit through discomfort and unhappiness if you know that it's going to end. It's a lot easier to sit through discomfort and happiness if you know that it's going to end, if you know what's going to happen at the end, if you know that it's for a good reason. But I don't know, you haven't put anything in your letter about why you're long distance, about what if if it's going to be resolved, if when you're getting married next year, you're going to start living together. Because if if you are, if you have talked about like your future, your plans, what you want to do with it, how open relationships fit in with your relationship in the future. Have you talked about the time that you're going to spend? Are you going to have set date nights with other people? Are you going to, are you interested in having, you know, just dating and just hooking up with other people? Are you actually interested in having other relationships? Are you ever interested in those other partners living with you? Now, there's so many questions and so many different ways of doing polyamory that maybe you need to have some of these these discussions and maybe you will feel and have something to ground yourself a little bit more when you have these shitty feelings. Because yeah, when you have these shitty feelings, you can say, oh, okay, you know, yeah, right now it sucks that I don't get to spend time with him in person, but I will get to spend time with him on this time. I will get to this, you know, on this week, it's going to end on this date. And I think that's a big part of it. If it's just never ending, going to be long distance, then maybe this isn't something, you know, it depends. I think it's unrealistic for people to, and I think some people end up being more miserable because they expect themselves to be happy, like in a state of constant euphoria 24 seven. And I don't think that's actually very realistic. And I think, you know, we have a lot of things presented to us in media and in social media of what looks like people who are like constantly happy and never have any problems. And I think that it's, it's kind of an unrealistic thing. Sometimes we have this kind of unrealistic expect expectation to be constantly happy when maybe sometimes like we're, we're super happy 10% of the time, mostly we're just chill. And then we have some really crappy times 30% of the time. Like I think 
I think that you need to ask yourself like, okay, part of this situation, if, if you're always going to be long distance, part of the situation is always going to be a little bit shit because of the way that it is. Like you're always going to feel a little bit sad, even if he's not dating someone, but maybe it's all super obvious when he has been on a date, like that kind of brings it more to the forefront because someone else is able to spend time with him and you're not, but you're always going to be a little bit sad in this situation. But maybe the time that you do spend together, especially if you have like set time with each other. I think that's so important. I think a lot of people forget about that, but like set scheduled time with one another sometimes just shows, like even if it feels hokey, it just shows that someone else like actually is wanting to spend time with you and they're actually wanting to set that with you. And so I think that you can accept a little bit of the lumps, even if this is permanently long distance, if you can also deal with you know, have that happiness? Like, does the happiness overwhelm? Yeah, I think somebody said something like it's a 70, 30% in terms of relationship satisfaction. Like, you're never going to be perfectly happy all the time. You're going to have conflict. You're going to have shitty times. You're going to have an unhappy time. But if you can be pretty happy most of the time, then that's also good. So I think that's one thing. The other thing I want to address is that you're kind of putting this unrealistic expectation on yourself um, because you're saying you're not dating because you're still working on yourself. And whilst I still under, I, I do understand that aspect. I do understand like, look, I want to handle this. And, and it's one thing to like, look, I want to spend time alone so that I can like focus on getting things right. But I do want to encourage you to not think that there's ever going to be a perfect time because sometimes problems that we have in relationships can only be solved within the relationship because when you're on your own, those problems actually won't come to the surface. It's only when you're in a relationship that those problems actually come to the surface and you have to be able to deal with those problems. It's one of the reasons why I don't suggest people like, you know, when they're struggling in polyamory, don't like all of a sudden stop and go back to monogamy to like cool down or fix the problems is because sometimes the problems that come up in polyamory come up when you're polyamorous. And then when you're monogamous, they don't come up in the same way. So if you think that you're going to fix it by closing it, you're not actually addressing the problem because it's not actually happening. It's sort of like trying to learn how to, I mean, I don't know if this is an adequate metaphor, but I'm trying to find metaphors so that I can explain myself. But it's sort of like trying to learn to swim by like moving your hand in, in, a, in a bucket of water. Like, yeah, you can learn some stuff from that, but like sometimes you have to be in the situation in situ to solve the issue and to actually address the issue. So I would really encourage you, like I'm not saying it's never appropriate to take some time off, especially because when you are in another relationship, you do have to consider another person. There are more problems that you have to think about. There are more challenges and maybe you're not up for that and that's fine, but don't think that there's going to be some perfect moment. I don't want you to set yourself up for failure, essentially, and thinking that, okay, I've got everything solved. I'm totally fine. I'm going to go into a relationship. There's going to be no issue. And that's just not how it works. Like, there will be problems that will only come up when you're actually in relationship with somebody and in in person relationship with somebody. There are going to be problems that you may have never dealt with when it comes to polyamory that won't come up until you're actually in that that situation. So, Make sure you're not setting yourself up for failure or thinking that you you failed somehow if, if you do all this hard work on yourself and then you go into a relationship and things don't work out the way that, you know, they don't work out perfectly or you have problems. But yeah, to sum up, I think understand that there's an aspect of this situation that is always going to be shitty because you aren't getting the things that you want. You guys are separated. That is sucky. And there isn't anything that you can necessarily do to fix that. It's just going to be part of the whole situation. So forgive yourself for thinking some of these thoughts and maybe, you know, in your therapy, pick apart some of this idea of like someone else touched him and that whole contaminant thing. Cause I do think part of that is a little bit from society, but you are going to feel a little bit shit. And I think you need to talk more with your partner about like what your future plans are. If this long distance thing is going to end when it's going to end, have some set time together. If you don't already like, you know, maybe Tuesday night is your night. You have a call planned. You do something, you have a little date, you make dinner together on the phone. Like you can, still do stuff but make sure that's set time together because sometimes that can really help you kind of cope with some of the shitty feelings and it can also make you feel a lot better and I think last but not least like I said it's fine if you want to work on yourself but don't think that you're gonna be at this perfect sort of level of totally balanced psychologically and it's, you know, all your relationships are going to be smooth and easy because you may work on yourself. You may get to a point where you're like, yeah, I've got it. You may enter a relationship and then you can have like a major 
significant family death and that can completely throw you off psychologically or you may lose your job or like there's all kinds of things that come up in life that you will never be able to predict and you'll never be able to account for and plan for that can totally fuck you up psychologically that you will have to cope with and and there will be lots of demands on you but you can deal with that but you can't always plan for it so don't set yourself up for failure by thinking that working on yourself is gonna fix everything because it won't so yeah, I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 122 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. If you want to be awesome, you can become a patron on my Patreon. If you do that, it's really, really helpful for me. It just is a general vote of support. And if you do it at the podcast shout out tier and you tell me what your name is and how to pronounce it, your name will be read at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Aubrey Jones, Duke, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, Justin Com, and Aaliyah. If you can't do that, because I totally understand not everyone has disposable income, then two things you can do to really help the podcast is rate and view it on iTunes or Spotify. You can write a review if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. Even just a rating helps me get that algorithm up there. And then another thing you can do is sign up for the email list because social media is a pain in the butt and it's really just an ad selling platform and they don't want me to be able to reach all of you. I have followers. I've got lots of followers on these platforms, but they don't want me to reach all of you because they want to charge me money for ads. So if you want to actually stick it to all those social media things and stick it to the admins or whatever you want to do, you can sign up to my email list by going to nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. That's all for this week. You'll get a new column next week and a podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. The podcast music was done by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com. Our podcast art was done by Dom Young, and you can visit Dom's site at d-o-m-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you again for listening. Bye.